Uh, well, first I guess I got a call to order uh, in general. And then I'm going to call the City Council Committee of the Whole to order. And if you wouldn't mind, roll call, please. Sasada? Here. Larson? Here. Smith? Here. Perkins? Present. Present. Here. <laughs> McAdams? Here. Burbick? Here. Walker? Here. Mayor Barnes? Here. Eight present. Awesome. Now the Finance Advisory Committee is to be called to order. You. I would like to call our committee to order, and I'd like to ask you, Ms. Scott, to please call the roll for us. Babcock? Here. <clears throat> McGill? Neely? Here. Terezinski? Here. Washington? Here. Four present. All right. Uh, then I would take a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Perkins, seconded by Alderwoman Larson. Uh, any comments or questions? Hearing none, roll call, please. Zasada? Yes. Larson? Yes. Smith? Yes. Perkins? Yes. McAdams? Yes. Verbeck? Yes. Walker? Yes. Mayor Barnes? Yes. 8i? All right. Bab Sorry. Babcock? Here. Yes. <laughs> McGill? Oh, sorry. Not McGill. Neely? Yes. <laughs> Tarasinski? Yes. Washington? Yes. 4i? All right. The agenda has been approved. Moving on to agenda item C, public participation. We have none. Uh, moving on to agenda item D, consideration number one, consideration of key assumptions for the fiscal year 2024 city budget. City manager, would you like to kick this off? I would. Thank you very much. And good evening, everybody. Uh, in our audience tonight are department heads and other staff who are uh, part of the team that I work with in ultimately producing a budget, a fiscal year budget for you every year. I want to make a couple of introductions. Susan Hallman is to my immediate right, and she is the Director of Financial Services. And Megan Challen, who is our, our senior accountant, is also joining us, and she is, uh, both of them have been newly appointed, and we have uh, re reworked the finance office. We're in the process of of also looking for uh, an accountant to pick up some of the technical toolbox that we'd like to have to round out the department. I really appreciate their work with me to date, particularly over the last month, and uh, you'll be the judge as to whether we've done our work adequately to get to this point. So what is this point? Uh, for people who may be watching, if anybody is watching <laughs> tonight, <laughs> you probably look, oh boy. Uh, we are uh, at the early stage, not the very first stage, of the preparation of a fiscal year budget. We have a fiscal year that coincides with our calendar year. And the, the very first uh, uh, considerations at the staff level begin as we get the final rushes of the audited numbers from the previous fiscal year. We have a pretty good idea where we ended up, and now we can, and we're looking at trends in the first couple of quarters of the current fiscal year. So that gives us a leg up and a head start, but uh, it doesn't get us very far down the road, if you will, because some very important state shared revenues are uh, lagging uh, uh, predictors. So sales and use tax in particular, those that are collected by the state and remitted back to us, uh, are usually two to three months uh, in the in the paying back, and so uh, numbers that we're looking at right now uh, on the sales side were incurred back in April. Nevertheless, we've been doing that for a long time, so we ought to be pretty good at figuring some of this out. Uh, that's what we uh, have tried to do for your um, edification tonight. So let me begin by talking about some basic assumptions that will uh, have to this point guided our prognostications and uh, I can pause at any point uh, if you want to ask a question or if you have a comment you'd like to make. Um, I'm happy to indulge those. I will uh, uh, make the, uh, uh, this is a caveat, I guess. Uh, over the weekend, I had terrible allergies, and they continued into the morning. And uh, the only impact they've had on me is my voice. So nothing, nothing to worry about. I should be able to get pretty far into this without gasping for air. All right, uh, what are the key assumptions? Well, every year, um, the, the largest part of our budget uh, is uh, owing to, in terms of spending, is owing to personnel. 
But before we start talking about that and, and some spending priorities, we have to look at, at the revenue stream. So what, what do we know? Uh, we do know, as we've talked here in the last couple of years, we've talked about uh, federal monies that have penetrated uh, our, our financial stream, if you will, and they have been sizable and significant. They reimbursed us for uh, uh, spending uh, voids that we had back in 2020 and into 2021. Uh, they, in the next fiscal year, we will see the last of the dollars from the federal ARPA grants uh, being uh, spent. Uh, the safer money will also uh, be still flowing through our system, but is uh, also, that's the grant money that we've talked here for a couple years about that helped us hire uh, nine firefighters that also will be expended. Um, and uh, from a personnel side, what, what is it we're looking at? What are the top priorities? Uh, and we, we go through this before we get to this meeting every August. Uh, and we, at the staff level and with the department heads, uh, I sit down with the finance staff and we, we look at whether or not we are able to provide a constant level of services, same level of services with the same number of people, and are there new services or an expansion of services that are being requested by the council, by the general public, by a ward that will require the addition of new personnel? So uh, to spice that up a little bit, this year I, I met with uh, the leaders of the three largest departments, uh, public works, fire, and police, and I wanted to know what they thought about where we were as we look ahead for the next couple of years. You remember uh, about this time last year, we talked about the financial plan we have for 20 through 22 through 24. We have uh, a comprehensive land use plan now that's been up, upgraded and as predicted, we're seeing more involvement and, and development on the south side of the Cal. What, what impact, if any, does that have on, on services? Uh, and then also, are we, are we doing what we need to do in response to uh, service demands. Uh, after talking with the police chief, we talked about the continuation of a plan that was identified a couple of years ago where we were going to hit uh, at least 70 uh, sworn officers. That includes uh, the, the chief and the command staff. By the end of this year, we're going to hit 72 uh, because of some giving and taking, uh, some people have left and some people have retired and so forth and in the rhythm of things, I let it roll this year uh, and we'll get to that 72 probably by the end of the year, very close to the end of the year, uh, maybe into 2024. Uh, but our objective was to get to 75, we've talked about this before, we will get to 75 uh, with the council's uh, approval and the FAC's uh, guidance. Uh, by the end of 24. That's what we have put into this uh, preliminary conceptual uh, document that you prepare for tonight. On the fire side, well, let me back up. On the public work side, uh, we've got two major divisions. So we've got the utility division, utility engineering. We've got streets and airport and uh, Andy Rye and Brian Faber and I have talked about that. Uh, we're, we're talking about an addition of one person to water division. Uh, we're, we're staying pretty much level. As you know, we in, in recent months we've worked on in the mechanic shop at, uh, in the street division. We've worked on that. That is working out well so far, I would say, when you Chief and Andy, okay. Uh, so no change there. Uh, the fire department, uh, has uh, a couple of uh, uh, features right now which we have been talking about for a couple of years. We, we dealt with the, the requirements for staffing on the first arriving vehicles a couple of years ago. We built into the budget the firefighters we needed, firefighter paramedics we needed to get to a place where we had basically a um, a shift, uh, a minimum shift uh, that was at the end of this, sh uh, at the end of 24 was to get to 16. And uh, uh, generally uh, the uh, first arriving engine and ambulance together 
constituted five persons rather than four. We did, we, we spent, I'm not going to go back over that, but we, for 25 years we were doing uh, two and two uh, on the hope that when the fire engine arrived, the two in the ambulance would actually be with that fire engine and that, that we'd have enough people on the fire ground to aggressively attack a fire. Um, an issue has arisen in the last three or four years, which is not uh, going away, it's uh, trending uh, in the direction of requiring our attention and uh, a good part of the first, first uh, bit of my essay tonight uh, deals with that and that's the possibility of adding another fire station to our southwest quadrant <coughs> which covers a good part of the sixth ward, the seventh ward, the fifth ward and the fourth ward and also including uh, the development area to the south of, of the tollway. Well, why are, we even, why are we thinking about that? Well, it's not the first time we've thought about it. Uh, over 20 years ago, when the Schnook subdivision was uh, entitled and, and uh, the development agreement was struck and started building out, uh, a dedication of an acre of land was made to the city of DeKalb for use as a fire station openly uh, and obviously. Uh, so here we are 20 <coughs> plus years later. Uh, what's changed? Well, one thing has changed is the volume of calls. The volume of calls from the, from the southwest quadrant and the simultaneous calls that contribute to the difficulty of the support stations getting there on a good day and then getting there when we have calls sometimes two or three at a time. I think uh, on Sunday we had 20 calls in, what was it? Ten in an hour and, and then 20 through the day. So ten in an hour uh, involved uh, really the full complement of all three stations. So um, usually what you do when you start doing this planning, you, you have some uh, nice uh, circles and you put them on the map and you see what's the influence zone and we're way out of that now. Uh, it doesn't mean that people can't go home tonight to their houses for fear that they are in danger. Uh, it does mean that our, our uh, travel times are not up to where they ought to be. Four minutes is the travel time standard for uh, the first arriving vehicle, whether it's an ambulance or an engine. Uh, four minutes does not include uh, the getting onto the rigs uh, or what happens when, when uh, they first arrive on the scene. But it's four minutes of travel time. We're averaging six around the whole town and there are times when it might get to more than that in the southwest quadrant. If there happens to be an ambulance heading back to its own district, um, that would be a shorter time. But the average over uh, all of 2022 was a little over six minutes and it's rising. And the rise in the simultaneous calls complicates that and drives that faster forward. So. Uh, we have looked hard at other options, uh, just uh, staffing the other three stations. Uh, Fuller doesn't make a difference when it comes to the travel time. Uh, traveling across town these days, uh, whether there's a bridge out or not, uh, does make a, a difference in that travel time. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, there'll be a day where the fastest route from uh, another station to that southwest quadrant south of Lincoln Highway and, and west of uh, say First Street uh, is the third station, uh, station three up on Dresser. Sometimes it might be uh, station two. It really depends on the traffic, it depends on what else is going on and whether the, the units are returning to, to station or not. Anyway, I, a lot of this is in your background. We have looked very hard and in, in significant detail, as much as we have available to us, at what it would take to build another station. And then the, the question is, uh, aside from identifying a need, uh, what about the timing? Uh, is this a good time? Maybe we wait a few years. Um, we, we looked at that as well. Let's look on the physical cost of doing that. Right now, um, and after working with Baird Finance, who did our, uh, who worked with us over the last uh, 
two bonds that we've done uh, and, and were engaged with us for this process. Uh, we're looking at about a, a $4.2 million uh, station that's soup to nuts. Uh, the the, the uh, facility, the, uh, the landscaping, the paving, the detention, and, and the rest, and, and, and equipment, uh, although we're not going to bond for equipment. So uh, uh, what, what would that do to our debt service? Well, as you can see in the background, and that's on page, Yeah, let's go to three. It's in a couple places. We'll go to three. Where are we now with our general fund debt? Well, I'm happy to say that we are coming out of a general fund debt level that has been pretty, pretty level, pretty flat for a number of years. And actually, uh, at the end of 24, would have probably gone down to uh, about $400,000. But uh, we did that flip and toss back in 2020, where we wanted to save $1.8 million from our uh, general fund budget during the, the heart of COVID, and so we added three more years at the back end at the same level. So, in, in from 24 to 28, what's proposed here, if you look at it on page three, is debt service that adds another 400, a little bit more than 400,000 to the uh, uh, overall debt, debt service obligation. Um, that would be covered by our GEMT fund. <coughs> Uh, assisting the the general fund in this uh, instance, and then after that the debt comes off, we're back to about 1.8 million, which is where we've been for the last four or five years. Uh, and as we go further out, as we go past uh, uh, 2032, 31, uh, we will see that go down as well. So I uh, the right now the uh, cost of bond is about 3.8, 3.9%. Frankly, it's, it's just in the last week, it's changed, it's fluttered up and down. Uh, uh, the uh, city is making 5% in its uh, investments in the Illinois funds, which is with the Illinois State Treasurer. And uh, that's a, a, a great uh, uh, percentage uh, interest. Uh, uh, benefit for us, so we we've been at you know one percent for so many years, and we're at five percent now. So as long as we're substantially making more interest on our current uh, savings, if you will, it's better to borrow than it is to to spend that savings. Yes, Alderman Walker. Alderman Walker. Okay. Now we're going to move to this. So so I would think okay, five percent is five percent is a good interest rate, but you know. It's just thinking like it's temporary because it will go down based off of uh, inflation when it cools, right? So I guess um, I don't know how this would be sustained. I mean, you're you know the Michael Jordan of this. So I'm sure you'll figure this one out. But um, it's just I don't know. I'm just trying to understand it, you know, because I, I don't think it'll stay. Well, that's a good question. So it 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 may, it may not, uh, or it may. Uh, we don't know. Uh, there are a lot of people. Uh, you know, betting one way or another on whether we're heading toward disinflation or a sticky higher level of inflation to live with where it's four or five percent. But uh, the five percent is sort of a gift from the state government, if you will. But let's say it drops to four. It's still more than uh, the dollar we have in our pockets that we're putting in the bank, if you will, is making us more money than it and it makes nothing. And we're spending 3.8 percent, say, out, out of the other pocket for the cost of the bond uh, defeasance. So uh, I think uh, until we hit level or, or go below that, then it doesn't make any sense. But we're going to lock in the bond at a percentage rate. And um, what we need is to get out uh, about three or four years. And then, as you can see by the chart, then, then some of that other debt comes falling off. And then the overall obligation is substantially reduced. But even at a minimum, let's say the scales tip, our fund balance, we could stroke a check, pay yeah. off the debt, um, if it looks like we, we could. That 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 yeah. percentage starts changing drastically. <clears throat> where we want to make that decision. That would that'd be up to the you know what I mean? but that, that'd be another option. Yep. But we're in a favored position, I guess, in short, on the on the debt side. <laughs> on the staffing side, uh, we will pursue grant support. Uh, we will talk to Safer and see what we can do, but. 
I, I couldn't present this plan to you without knowing what would happen if we didn't have that. So that's why we've looked at uh, where will we be. I, just for the interest of space, we, we went out through FY27, if you look on page four, uh, and looked at what the general fund would look like, assuming a commitment to build a, and staff a fourth fire station. And the, again, uh, a major, um, uh, major assist comes from the GEMT fund. And uh, you have to go back and forth a little bit in, in your background here, but if you go to, uh, page 10, so you have page 4 and page 10 to look back on. I've highlighted on page 10 uh, the, the bump up in the transfer to the general fund, which you can see comes in in a timely way as we get out uh, and we, we start, uh, we, we've now reached the point where more of our general obligation debt has fallen off and we're now helping with about 50% of the cost of the staffing and then that that plateaus or it depends then on on uh, annual wage increases uh, things like that which are in your control so that's where we are i i only went to this level of detail because uh, we haven't talked together with the finance advisory committee about this and because people are uh, tuning in which may not have been looking when we talked about this on july 24th so questions Council or FAC? Tom? Uh, just in general, I, I saw the headcount for that, uh, which is included in the five year projection. Yeah. Yeah. That's at nine. Yeah. Is, is that static or will that grow to a full complement? Well, that's what we have to, uh, well, that's negotiable, as you know, uh, in sense that it's uh, uh, conditions and uh, and compensation, but uh, <clears throat> what we talked about was a, a jump uh, company to get us going. Uh, what we will probably do is bring back to the council uh, a, a long-term agreement uh, proposal, which we will negotiate uh, with Local 1236, like we did when we when we knew about the, well, we didn't, we hadn't even received the, uh, the notification for the SAFER grant yet, but we said, this is what we got to do. This is the right thing to do. We're sort of at that same point again. Uh, we can do it. Uh, the, to go from three to five is the bump that I did not put in here, but it is the five uh, possibility, which would be the minimum like we have at uh, station three right now and station two. Uh, that's where we want to get to. And can we do it? Uh, for reasons I'll get into when I get a little further into revenue, uh, I think this is an ultra-conservative document that I'm showing you uh, in a couple of different ways, both from a property tax side and also from a sales and use tax side. Uh, I, I wanted to show you the worst case, in my opinion, at this, as we sit here with the, with the knowledge that we have uh, and to carry that out for about five years. One for clarification, the, the jump company is three people. When you mentioned nine firefighters before, that means three shifts of three yeah, people, three essentially. Three. Yeah, entirely. That gets us to nine, and then in 2024, we negotiate with the fire department, and yeah. we start looking at what would it take to yeah. be a full complement, which would be five, which would mean 15 total. Yeah. But hopefully we can slowly grow into that based off of uh, our yeah. budget going forward. Which we forward did before we negotiated yep. that. But we'll probably, I mean, I'm, I'm open to, uh, and I know uh, uh, we've had some, some very informal conversations with the local about the possibility of opening it sooner. If we're going to make a commitment, then why wait a year? Let's, let's look into this and let's see what we yeah. can do. Tom, did you have a follow-up at all? No? Any other comments or questions so far? Hearing none, City Manager? Okay. So... That's, a, that's the major priority in terms of new spending Bless you. Uh, in a general operating fashion. So let me take you through the rest of the revenue. If we go to, um, I'm sorry, Nothing. I'm, oh, okay. <laughs> I do the same thing all the time. <laughs> Let's go to uh, page five. So. As we've done in, in the recent years, uh, this I've been here, we've tried to identify 
uh, where we're going by looking really hard at those uh, key revenues that uh, in the case of our general operating fund make up almost this year almost uh, in, in the current fiscal year of FY23 about 66 percent of the total so a major part uh, almost two-thirds so property taxes are every year uh, a, a important uh, component although as we've talked and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it uh, every dollar of our property tax goes into uh, state pension obligations that we have so when you look at your tax bill every year you see two lines usually for each taxing body one is intended for operating ones for pensions and uh, there's nothing in our general operating last year I had a number of calls because people said you forgot the to levy. No, we didn't actually. But the levy was for the debt service the obligation that we have. So what, what is that this year? It's, it's spread across uh, uh, page five uh, and some projections uh, also going, going ahead. Uh, there is uh, a shortfall just levying what the actuary recommends that we levy. Uh, we want to levy at 100% of our obligation. So uh, even accounting for the fact that uh, uh, employees also pay in and retirees pay in. We, we um, on, that's on page six. We have uh, identified this year a shortfall of about uh, 1350000 and change uh, that has to come out of other sources, sales and <coughs> use taxes primarily. And uh, that's down a little bit from last year because uh, what's proposed here very tentatively until we get to October when we talk more seriously about options is is just 5% uh, more uh, in terms of the levy to help with the pension obligation because the phenomenal uh, benefit that we're all realizing uh, in terms of new EAV will allow us to do that, not only reduce our rate but reduce the, hopefully the out-of-pocket uh, taxes that are paid for the city portion of the property tax bill. And uh, just sort of a, a quick over the over the shoulder look at where we are and, and why we're, we are where we are. If you look at page seven into eight, uh, I'm sorry I had to break up this chart. It would look prettier if I had it all. But if you look halfway down, you see a, a green heading says 2023. So after visiting with uh, the chief assessment, <coughs> chief assessment officer uh, about three weeks ago, um, I was able to come up with these numbers. Look at that chart and, and sort of absorb it. So um, the meta development is, is entirely in Afton Township. It's, it's the part of Afton Township other than the, the Afton Road that uh, falls within the city of DeKalb's jurisdiction and it's part of our EAV. The rest of our industrial shown in this chart is in DeKalb Township. That's one difference. Now the other difference is the enormous taxable amount of new construction that has come our way. Now, some of that, uh, there, there's obviously an abatement here, and that uh, reduces uh, our, our uh, uh, return. Nevertheless, the, the huge investment that's being made in our community um, is floating uh, local taxing bodies and helping local and should be helping local taxpayers. Uh, so if we add that, you see the blue number at the bottom right, 149, 196, 742. That, that gets added uh, with uh, the uh, all other industrial in town, the other blue on the top on the next page, <coughs> page eight. And you get 233,507,983 for the total industrial. That's not all new, but that's total industrial. Uh, the rest of the industrial in town, uh, we're, there is no calculation here for new construction to be ultra conservative. The same with all residential and all commercial. So this is below the line, if you will, uh, because it's a scary number. It's 900, the total of it all with the substantial uh, bump we're, we're looking at a multiplier for DeKalb Township around nine and a half percent Afton Township's a little over one and a half percent but that's 900 almost 950 million dollars up from 585 million in 19 uh, it's 19 listen to me 2000 and 
2019. Uh, can you pause on that? So yeah. 2018, that was the date. Yeah. It was $547 million. Well, that was 18, so 2019 yes, would have been 585. I'm just wanted to call that number out. And, and what is it projected Five, to be now? What's that? What is it projected to be now? 950, roughly. Yeah. So within a period of yeah. six, seven years, yeah. we're up, as you calculated, I'm sure exactly 73%. Yeah. Um, yeah, how could we not reduce our tax rates? That's the challenge. I, I want to say that. Uh, Mayor Barnes, uh, supported, I think, wholeheartedly by the council, has, has uh, had uh, two summit meetings with representatives of the other taxing bodies at this point. Uh, there'll be another one uh, in about six weeks or so as uh, the taxing bodies get closer to, to uh, understanding what their options are for uh, new levies and uh, I'm, I'm to get the proposed uh, levy and EAV numbers from them, add them all up, see where, where we are, and then we have a third summit which will tell us are we making progress toward that goal of reducing taxes overall or are we not? Uh, almost certainly the rates will go down, but we have to look, we have to go a little deeper uh, and see if the, uh, we'll have a couple of, of examples of what we might call the average taxpayer, a uh, certain size house, certain valuation. This is what they paid last year. This is what they paid this year. So uh, we intend to do that. We intend to do that f for you as well when we get to October. Uh, the final uh, numbers from the individual township assessors uh, are into the, have to be into the supervisor of assessments at the county level by October 1st, so we'll know after October 1st, as uh, meetings start being held, we'll have our meeting uh, with the Finance Advisory Committee and, and be the third Monday in October, and around the 20th, I can't remember what it is. And, uh, and then the levies are usually voted in November, and uh, they have to be to the county in, uh, in December, December 28th or 29th this year. So, uh, Stay tuned on this. This is, this is good news, folks. It's, uh, it's all good news. It's, it's good to have this problem. We've never in the history of the CALB had this problem. The last time private investment drove a bump like this was when the railroads hit here, relatively speaking, in the 1860s. Uh, there were, and after, after it the is Civil War. I mean, there is no, yeah. that is not uh, a It's not an exaggeration. That's, true. that's fact. Even yeah. the expansion of NIU, which has brought lots of money, right, lots of investment, but it, does, it, it doesn't pay taxes, right? So uh, this doesn't generate the property taxes. So, uh, uh, you know, a lot of con good construction value and, and the rest, but uh, and a lot of, lot of incomes, uh, laborers and, and trades of all of sorts, but uh, it's, that's still different. So here we are. Um, and it looks like this can continue, but nothing is given. And um, while we're, we have to be good stewards, uh, evidently uh, private investors we've never met, and uh, we've heard of them, but we've never met any, uh, have, have decided that DeKalb is a good place to be, so. And if you don't mind, just taking one minute on the, the property tax summit, and I wanted to thank Alderman Perkins for attending the last one with us. Um, what, what's key about here is uh, Brian Gregory from the county, I thought it put it really well, it's a, it's a philosophical uh, approach or uh, a, a philosophy of, of how you govern. And when you look at a 73% increase in EAV in a five-year period, how could we not drive our property tax rate down, the aggregate property tax rate down for the taxpayer of the city of DeKalb? For me, it would be irresponsible for us not to ultimately do that. We've been quoted, you're asking us to do more with less, and it's the exact opposite. Driving the property tax rate down, everyone's levy, their budget, is going to continue to grow. We're asking everyone to do more with more. But it's really important for this council, especially because I know we're all actively involved in the community, we're actively involved with other uh, elected officials, that we keep championing this cause that at some point we need to be thinking of the taxpayer. And we've been doing that the last few years, almost, almost every taxing body, not everyone, but almost everyone. Um, but collectively, we could really reduce our tax rate down to be at a competitive level with all the surrounding communities. 
And when we do that, boy, people think we're having a lot of EAV increases right now. Now we just leveled the playing field on an important topic with a lot of these industries, a lot of homeowners, a lot of developers of the next subdivision. Um, doing that is going to most likely drive more economic development, which is going to drive more property tax revenue, which is going to increase everyone's budget. It seems like a no-brainer, but we'll see come October uh, if everyone is on board. That sum it up? Yeah. Okay. Um, one last thing, look at the chart at the top of page seven, and you will see where all the other taxing bodies and, and the city have been in the last couple of fiscal years. Uh, and the, the city last year reduced its, its uh, rate to uh, 0 0.89599. Uh, projected will be somewhere, if you look in the second to last column going left to right, at 0.85119, that, that may be different. We'll, we'll see as we get the real hard numbers or harder numbers on EAV, but it shouldn't be hard to get to that point. Uh, we're, so if we're usually about 10% and we're trying to get to nine, we're, we're, leading, we're leading lower. We're, we're submarining <laughs> as we lead. So uh, it's, it's good news for the taxpayer. We're trying to continue though to, to keep pace uh, at least keep pace with our obligations in terms of, of uh, state pension. So. And why it's probably really important now, I think you said it, Bill, that the township assessor is projecting a 10% increase in the valuation of property. Almost. Yes, yeah, just shy of that. So that means whatever your home is worth, it's going to be worth 10% more, which means your property taxes are going to go up accordingly. Driving that tax rate down, it would be magical, uh, and I think we could do it if all of us really focused on Let's make sure that that owner of a, a home in the city of DeKalb, for whatever the value is, actually pays less dollars. That would be phenomenal. <clears throat> With a 10% increase, it's going to be difficult, but that's why if we can all try and drive towards that, all the taxing bodies, that would be fantastic. Um, but at a minimum, our tax rate better go down. I mean, it went down almost a full percentage point in a year. We should see similar things happen with the EAV that we already know is on the books and coming that will be booked in 2024 and 2025. This should be an easy thing. So again, it's up to all of us to make sure we're championing that cost. Alderman Walker. Yeah, <clears throat> and this is a question I would ask you, city manager, if it was just me and you, but I've been on busy, so I'm just going to ask you right now. So, Lauren, you know, the property tax is something I'm sure we're all for, but here's my thing. If and I made some notes. If reducing the rate is fine and it reduces the amount of taxes actually paid, it's cool, but a lower tax rate means nothing in the amount of property taxes paid by an owner if the property or if the owner have, or if the property owner taxes go up. Does that make sense? Well, but I, I, can, I'm I, happy to. can I try? If, well, hold on. He, yeah. he, he has a way of explaining it to me. Okay, all right. Go for it. City okay. Manager. Uh, no, no, you're no, fine. It's okay. I, I, I'm more uh, making sure I understand it, it's it too. A, so it's a three-legged stool. There's wow. truth to what you're saying. Uh, so the city's levy divided by the city's estimated EAV gives you a product, which is the rate. And, and it's true that when, when you go out to your mailbox in April next year and you see that, that <coughs> big envelope, oh boy, and you open it up, you want to see that you're paying less taxes. It doesn't, you don't look at the rates, and, and that's not the first thing you look at the bottom, boom, boom, yeah. bottom right, yeah. that's right. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. So, uh, but the rate is, is a, an element of that calculation. It, there has to be a product that is the rate, and uh, because of the spike in inflation <clears throat> of, of the home, so, and of the, the property sold in 2023, because uh, it's a 23 levy that's paid in 24. Yeah. So in this year, and over the last three trailing years, it's three, a three trailing year period, uh, we're stuck with that, and, and the inflation started last year, remember, about mid-year? Yes, sir. So here we are, uh, and we're, we're gonna go to nine and a half. Now, that's historically high. Uh, we went through a number of years where it was 1%, uh, two, Last year, 6.6 percent, .6 roughly. Yes. Uh, bless you. 6.62. Was that it? Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I was off by 100. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, 200 is actually. So uh, anyway, uh, that, that's that's true. 
let's see what we can do. I think last year uh, the difference between 22 and 21 was 8.64 percent in the overall rate. We can get to 10. As the mayor was saying, we can get to 10. Uh, because we just went up an historic bump in valuation. So uh, it's, wouldn't it be odd if one year when we're, it's like we're, we're surrounded by plenty in effect in terms of, of value, uh, we, uh, we're, we're going to be able to all raise our levies, but let's be very prudent about that so we continue this trend. Uh, actually, last year only three of these 10 property uh, uh, taxing bodies uh, lowered the impact on the individual homeowner. We were one of them. We were one. The, the smallest tax taker, Kishwaukee Water Reclamation District, and the school district. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's go for 10, 10 out of 10. Why can't we do that? I, it, if uh, we were asked, and my last comment on it, if we were asked in 2019, things look pretty grim, uh, somebody's an elected official said, I think we're in deep doo-doo, I think, uh, I remember that, uh, that we, we are uh, now in a, in a very favored position. So I think we can do this. All right. And we, we've talked about developing a spreadsheet to show, oh, sorry, to show like if, if your home didn't increase at all in value, like we cannot control what the township assessor is going to assess okay. the multiplier to be, how much they're going to say your house is worth this year X amount of dollars more, and they're just going to apply that towards your property tax bill. What we want to do is see if that didn't happen, would we have all allowed the taxpayer to pay less dollars? Yeah. But that's where this tax rate for me is so important that if the assessor says it's 10% more and we don't drop the tax rate, well, people are going to pay way more dollars because of that 10% uh, increase in the valuation of their home than they would if we also lower the tax rate in the process. So what we're trying to do is put as much money back in the taxpayer pocket, offsetting the increase in property values that someone has. Fair? Okay. Alderman Burr. And I think to Alderman Walker's point is the, the rate could go down, yet we could all still pay more tax. So yes. I think what I would look for in, in, on future documents on page 7, if we could get additional columns to show the overall tax amount uh, so that we can compare what does that amount look like versus the rate and how can we really impact the overall amount. Yep. In a positive I'll way. do better than that. Yeah. So uh, at levy time every year now for the last four, four years, we've had a document, uh, color yellow, green, blue, all that, that shows uh, that, that average. We started in 2019 with a house that was worth $300,000. Mm -hmm. It's more than some, but less than others, just for the heck of it, because we could divide by three and get 100,000, and that worked beautifully for everything else. So that's what we did. And we saw what that average uh, would be with all of the taxing bodies. I will present that by to year. you. That's where we're going to get, um, hopefully by the end of October. Thank you. Yep. Then we'll know. Then we'll know where we are with the multiplier figured in and everything else. OK. All right, let's move on uh, through revenue. Sales and use taxes. Uh, we had a, a, uh, a nice bump. Uh, the chief financial officer. Uh, was scared in 22, the 20, uh, you know, or in, in the end of 21 when we did the 22 budget. Uh, a lot of people were too, I guess. Uh, and uh, so we underestimated what our revenue might be. Uh, and uh, I thank our department heads for underspending. They were given uh, what they were given, and that was very prudent, uh, and they gave back uh, over half a million dollars. So uh, the, the total plus the, when you add in the transfers and, and so forth, uh, was uh, over, uh, was 5.6 million and, and almost 5.7 million that we saw a nice bump in our balance. Uh, this year, uh, again, I think we're being prudent in, in the projection, uh, state sales tax and the home rule tax. Uh, we're looking at, um, uh, about 1.9% uh, increase on the state sales tax. Now that's using IML, uh, Illinois Municipal League numbers. Uh, 
over the projected year end of this year. So we're not going budget. That's kind of a, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I think we ought to project where we're going to be. And that's, that is the actual, as close to the actual as we can come. And then we, we look ahead. Otherwise, it looks like a big bump, but it's, it's, it's not real. Uh, and then 1.6 percent on the home roll tax. So, uh, all pretty, pretty conservative. Hang on, manager. Yep. Go ahead. Um, I, 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 I get the the balance point, but I guess my question was: if, we, if I sum up um, sales and home rule, rule tax from 2022, it's 15.2 million, and we're expecting this year to come in at 13.4. And then projecting out into 2024 to be 13.5, what page if you will. I'm on page five. Middle of the page. Right in the middle, the sales and use taxes section. Yeah. I guess what I'm wondering is is where where what was what drove the change from 2022 to 2023 from 15.2 to 13.3. Because it looks like there's a. Where you know, where are you? Where'd you get to 15? I'm, I'm right in the middle of page five. <clears throat> and if I sum yeah. up the state sales tax and the home rule tax, yeah. So if I sum that up from 2022, you know, 6.6 6 million yeah. and 8.5 is roughly 15.2. So, yeah. So what happened is <clears throat> in, in 21 we 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 figured uh, before the 22 budget was was approved, we we sh shipped you uh, a budget that showed actually it was a little less than that because we amended the budget one time. But it's at 6.626. You see that 891. So that was, that was the actual at the at the or excuse me, we shipped you a budget that was about 6.3. It ended up at 6.6. .6. And so uh, when when we passed the budget, when I say amended, that we didn't amend the sales tax here. We amended other things in the budget, but it's officially the amended budget. Then we've amended bu the budget twice. But, but the actual is the actual. You the, know, actual so the, is the actual. The actual. Rev That's correct. In, in those and so our projected for the end of, of this year is, uh, I think that's that's conservative, but th this is where we're going, a little over six million, and next year about six point one six seven, and that's our best guess uh, based on what we're getting from the Department of Revenue right but now. But I think Alderman Perkins' question is why why such a drastic decrease? I mean, you're talking right. almost two million dollars. Yeah. Home rule tax that drop. Yeah. Um, right. Oh, I and, see. You're at home rule. State, looking at sales, sales tax. Yeah. Yeah. So home yeah. rule. You know. Yeah. Yeah. State sales tax is estimated yeah. to go down 10 percent. Home rule is going to go down yeah. double that. So, you know, and, and using that as the jump off point for 2024, that's why I'm. That's my question. Yeah. Is why such a drastic decrease? Well, this we'll year from last what, year, and yeah. then, then using that as a jump off point. And I guess what said a little differently. To me, looking at 2022, you know, if it's 15.2 and business has been good, I would expect 2023 to come in at 14.9, 15. Yeah. So the jump off is 14.9, 15 to 2024. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's 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 my question: is what's the difference well, between? Well, uh, the difference is this: it's all in timing. So two months ago, uh, if you watched uh, Bloomberg, you were hearing about the certainty of of a recession starting in the fourth quarter of this year. Right. You're not hearing that now. Well, everybody's backing off on that now. Everybody now, it's, now it's so, 40, 60. Yeah. So you know. these documents were prepared, the numbers uh, I, I was working on and then Susan got involved uh, back in uh, late June. Okay. So I will, as we get further on here and as we have more for instance, as we get some of the uh, school year end stuff, we know the summer is always slow, but we'll see what, actually, we're, we're, we don't even know for sure what the full bump of Easter was at this point. So we're, we're getting some numbers now, this, before the end of this month, that will help us. Okay. I'll have sharper numbers. Yeah, so, so I guess so that's it's better to be that way than uh, shooting the moon and saying, yeah. boy, I think this is terrific. Okay. So, because the state numbers are March or April is the last time we saw those, right? That's yeah. what I was going to say. There's already, yep. Yep. We only had three months in at the time we were preparing this. Yeah. So based off of what you have since April, the projected yeah. is 7.3 okay. or whatever it is, yeah. but there's a high probability maybe we get back up to that eight, eight and a half. Next time what we'll do, too, is uh, give you a little bit of a, maybe a side sheet that shows you what, what we're doing month, month on, year on year by the month. 
and then my big thing is just when when there are material differences yeah you know what's the what's the rationale for the material difference particularly if the material difference is then used to create the jump off point for the budget number for the next year you know so uh, it's really hard to project I guess the sum of it is what I started <coughs> with tonight is it's hard to project uh, at this point but we're yeah. doing the best I can yeah thank Good. you for that all right, if we're okay on the sales and use, let's jump ahead real quickly to the gross receipts. Uh, and uh, what, what I want to talk about is municipal utility tax. That includes uh, the, the... What page are you on? Same page. Eight, eight, page eight. eight okay. oh, yep. Right. So at the bottom of page eight, that includes uh, electric and gas, uh, the... Uh, this, this is a particularly hard one to guess, so we, we did bump this up a little bit, just because we're, we now have an energized building at uh, Meta, which we didn't have this time last year. We'll see how that percolates. There's a 50-50 tax sharing on that as part of uh, the development agreement, but that's 50% more than nothing, which was the case three, uh, certainly two, three years ago. So we'll, we're going to track that, uh, and, and uh, that may, I, I think where we are is pretty conservative, but it's, it's a bump up, you'll notice. Uh, and that's the major category, uh, or, or the major uh, revenue stream in that category. Uh, we, as I mentioned at the start, we have uh, still uh, some grant revenue from the ARPA fund uh, going through, that's, that's done. Uh, and. Uh, State income tax. Now, this is something where I did put in a bump because we knew what it was going to be. It's roughly 5%. The state legislature, that, let me back up. The local government distributive fund is uh, a fund at the state level that takes a variety of state or of local sourced monies, go to the, the state, and then they're remitted according to a per capita formula. And uh, way back now, uh, further than we'd like, uh, the, the deal with our locally generated state income tax was that the municipalities would share 10% of that total, whatever it is, on an annual basis, on a per capita basis. <coughs> uh, that uh, is no longer the case. We were at 6.1% uh, we and then we're going up to 6.5, 6 6.6%. Uh, and that started on August 1st. So we're already realizing some of that. There is going to be a bump on that, which will offset. And we really haven't seen a flutter, though, in terms of local uh, uh, tax from the last uh, year. Now, at this, at this point, we're going off of uh, filings that were done a year ago. But uh, So we'll, we'll, another one we'll be watching between now and October. We'll see how it's going, if it's making a difference. And then if you looked at my five-year projection for the general fund, there was another bump of about 3.5%. Uh, the mayor's on the IML board. The mayor's been an advocate not only to tax uh, relief, but also of, of uh, some relief for the municipalities uh, in terms of this state income tax sharing. And uh, I suspect uh, that IML uh, initiative is not going to go away next year or any Not other at all. So It's one of... Uh, well, it's, there's two major initiatives that affect what you're talking about today that the IML um, has really been lobbying for. And I mean, to the point of where the governor's coming up on stage and there's a LGDF, about five foot high acronym standing right next to the podium, which is the Local Government Distributive Fund, Distributive Fund um, just to constantly remind them that uh, they shortchanged us. It was 10%, now it's 6.6 .6 or 6.8, I can't remember. Um, but that's at the forefront of a lot of our discussions to be able to restore it to 10%. Now, that's not going to happen tomorrow. That's not going to happen next year or the year after. But if we can keep getting that half a percent back, that's money in our pockets. And quite frankly, it's money that we are due. That was the grand bargain, I think, back in 1969 when they first implemented the state income tax that that was supposed to happen. And they removed almost half of it. I think it was 2013 or something like that. So we'll, we'll continue making progress on that. But also the IML is advocating for police and fire pension reform. 
I think, Bill, it's 90% the state has uh, dictated that we have to have it funded by 2040, which is an unreasonable pace where there's many municipalities that ultimately, if that was to continue, would go bankrupt. We'd be one that will be in a really tight spot uh, if that continues. So we're advocating at a minimum to be able to get it to 2050, which doesn't fix the problem, but at least it, it expands it a little bit to get, allow a little breathing room for us to continue increasing the funding uh, to make that pension more stable, <coughs> but at least make it reasonable where municipalities aren't gonna be bankrupt in the process. So the IML has been a great lobbying organization for us. Okay, uh, let's go, uh, why don't we pause here? Does, that's a revenue piece that I wanted to explain to you tonight. Question. Council, FAC. Move to uh, expenditures? Yep, okay. keep going. Uh, I've already uh, previewed uh, what I was going to talk about on the personnel side. We're talking about nine new firefighter paramedics. Uh, we're talking about, uh, for, on the police side, three new police officers in 2024 spread out, uh, just as the uh, firefighter paramedics will be, uh, which will be mostly hired toward the end of the, the fiscal year. Uh, the, the plan for the, the fire station is to engage a, uh, an architectural firm uh, this fall, uh, probably go to uh, get, get plans in about 90 to 120 days. Uh, if they look good, then we go to bid. Uh, their bids are out, the bid documents are out for four to six weeks and uh, possible to break ground in the spring. And it will take uh, more than the balance of 24 to finish all of it, but the outside, the exterior work could all be done, including the paving and the, and the landscaping and so forth, but the inside has to be finished. That would probably be done during the winter 24, 25, and in the spring of 25, sometime maybe April, <coughs> May, that, that that would be open maybe sooner. So we would need that complement of nine before that point. At the end, at, say at the, at the latest at the end of the the first quarter in 25. Uh, so uh, that's that's pretty cautious and conservative. It might be more accelerated. We'll see what we can do. And um, and then on the on the police side, same thing. We're looking at uh, spacing. We, we would have. Uh, uh, two officers hired after July 1st and one officer hired in January of 24 to get to the, the <coughs> threshold of 75. Okay. Alton Perkins. So, but, so what, when are you, I'm looking at the budget numbers. It looks to me like you've, you've assumed the fireheads for six months in 2024, right? So they're gonna come on the second half of 2024 for training to re, be redeployed Correct. in 2025? Correct. Okay, and that's that's on page 11, the top of page 11 with the, yep. in the table for the fourth fire station staffing table. Right, <clears throat> right. and you can see there the, the general funds portion, the GEMT portion as we go out over time. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, questions? Hearing none, go ahead, City Manager. On the debt service side, uh, the, if we were to proceed with the bond, then the, uh, the spread that, uh, in terms of indebtedness is shown in the chart at uh, the bottom half of page 11. And you can see 2031, it would have been 2028, but again, we did that lift and toss uh, bond back in 2020. So uh, we're, uh, in terms of our, our, our comps, our, our competitors, this is uh, a, a strong position to be in, in terms of uh, indebtedness. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm pleased for how you've managed this over the years and, and uh, prior councils have as well. We, try to pay as we go uh, on a lot of things, where it's prudent to do that. I, I didn't have anything else I was gonna lead with on the general fund at this point because there's so, still so much to know and we, we're doing a lot of work. At this point, 
I, I do want to talk about the capital funds if you're still. I think there's one question. Yes. Yes. Perkins. So it, it's more a comment than a question. And it's, there's a lot of tremendous detail in this, the, the build up for the general fund for the, on the rev side and on the expense side. A couple things I'd like to call out. On page five at the bottom is a build up of the revenue. So the walking instructions for the next step in the process is that we're going to plan to budget to a rev level of 50,249,853. Mm -hmm. And that carries back over into page four. So if you look in the middle of the total rev, it's right there in the middle, 5249,853. Yep. And then the expenses. Our, our planning, we're going to plan to achieve a, 40, a budget of 46, 504, 834, right? Right. Those are the key numbers for the yes. process. Yes. What's, what's the sales number going to be and yep. what's the cost number yep. going to be? Yep. Also, going forward here's, from this discussion. Yes, and here's where we are right now. We know what the personnel numbers are going <clears> to be, <throat> but at this stage of the game, the, and they're actually entered in our financial software. Uh, we, we've been push and pull in, 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 in a collaborative way with the, other, with the city's departments and city manager's office. And so what they're putting in right now are the non-personnel numbers, contractual, uh, small equipment, not major capital equipment, uh, commodities, that type of thing. Uh, those aren't major portions of any of the, of the <coughs> department. Uh, in other words, they, they don't rival the personnel numbers. So, uh, we still have to see, when, when all those numbers are in, right now there's been general guidance, we see what they add up to. There'll probably be another round, as there is every year, of sit-downs with our department heads to say, uh, 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 we, gotta, we gotta do a little here, we gotta do a little there, so that we hit these numbers. Uh, these numbers have meaning over five years, four to five years. They don't have meaning just for this year. There's push and pull. I think we, we find a way to get there. And, and as I mentioned, the department has been very good in, in uh, saving money where they can and not spending money if it, if it makes a difference in terms of uh, the budget. So that's to come. By, by the middle of September, all those numbers are in. I'll know. And we prepare the uh, conceptual budget for the Finance Advisory Committee to be reviewed in mid-October. I think what I heard, all the contractual increases uh, from all the contracts with all the unions, those are all populated in there looking forward as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, it's, you know, we, well, we come to you. I, I'm happy to say our department has, like, whether it's a vehicle or a street project or whatever, we, there's a lot, there's horse trading involved, and uh, I don't know if that's a technical term, but there's, there's a, a, we find a way to, with the, with the dollars we have, to keep those services going. We'll have the same. We'll have one more truck, uh, plow truck, Andy, this year, or we just replaced. It's yeah, just came last month. So we replaced one, but you know, same number we're out there. But she's yeah, okay. And except this year, Andy is personally going to shovel the bottom of the driveway of every hole. <laughs> <laughs> In the Thanks, Andy. <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> Probably not. Okay. All right, let's uh, look at some capital funds, if, if, may, if we may, may we? Are you okay? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, let's go to uh, page 12 in your background. Uh, motor tool, fuel tax fund is typically the major fund for the street improvements that people are familiar with when it comes to, to overall. Uh, paving objectives and uh, this the last couple of years we've been stockpiling some funds there and relying more on uh, fund 400 the capital projects fund to to pull uh, its weight more and more than its weight really on the street uh, improvement side because we had to do the two bridges so we've got a fair amount of money from uh, IDOT and the state of Illinois we're very grateful for uh, we were getting an additional 960 thousand dollars a year for that over the last three years so that's that's being spent out now and at the end of uh, 24 that's all spent and uh, we still want to come up with a street program of about 2.5 million that's a tricky thing what I've tried to show you so far where we are and we don't know what the bids will be and, and all the rest of that but we're aiming for that same thing 
this year. I'd like to go more. I'd like to add another million on top of that, but we've got to finish the bridges. People will, when they're done, people will say, boy, this is worth it right now. I, I, um, a lot of uh, frustrated, aggravated drivers, including yours truly. Right. We all feel it. <laughs> yep. yeah. So uh, we're doing everything we can. Uh, that We had some uh, utility delays, uh, but we're, we're still moving on. I thank Zach Gill for, for keeping it going. Uh, so uh, that's, it, it's mostly the, the street improvements that are people that people are looking at, but we do other things. The Capital Projects Fund, uh, Fund 400 under B here, uh, also uh, provides an annual allocation of 50000 to Barb City Manor as part of a 10-year lease deal that we have with them. Uh, there's a non-TIF architectural improvement program that we started let, the, in the current fiscal year. I'm uh, proposing that we carry that over. That's seventy grand. It's been helpful, and uh, we, we will probably spend all that by the end. There are a couple projects that are pending right now or waiting on contractor uh, in not invoices, but proposals, uh, and so we can go through and see do these apply or do they not. Uh, also, we buy IT equipment, the PC replacements that have to be done from time to time, network infrastructure upgrades, public safety cameras, that's all coming out of Fund 400. So we, we spread what we can. The recurring sources are slim in both of these, uh, motor fuel tax from the state, obviously for the motor fuel tax fund, Fund 210. We have a local motor fuel tax, which we put uh, uh, money into our road expenditures at seven cents per gallon. And uh, it goes a ways, but not as far as we'd like. So, so far, hanging in there. Uh, and I think we've been pretty prudent in how that's being spent. Under uh, uh, Fund 420 at the bottom of the page, uh, has to do with our vehicle replacement fund. By the way, there's a typo there. The third line is it should say rely upon the one cent rather than the once cent, sorry. Uh, but it gets one cent out of that uh, local fuel tax uh, charge that people pay per gallon. Uh, it gets us about 120,000. Uh, we're spending uh, somewhere around five to six hundred thousand dollars a year this year on the high end of that for vehicle replacement. And those who have been following this for the last two or three years know that we're trying to make up for about a dozen, about a decade where no money was spent on vehicle replacement. So, uh, and what usually happens is with the, that vehicle that you want to last another year or two, bang, it's, it's done, what are you gonna do? So uh, we're trying to replace four squads a year in the police department, public works. Uh, vehicles are, are, are pricey, uh, the big trucks. Uh, and yes, on the walk. Hey, I'm sorry, I just want to go back real quick to 400, if I could. Okay. I was just trying to read it. You were talking a little fast. You were on a roll. I didn't want to ruin it. So are the uh, public safety cameras for 65, Yes. are those the LPR readers, or is those some new cameras I never Combina heard of? Combination, that's a plug. We had uh, a number of about that. Um, I don't even, I do have it, hold on. That would be for, for both. I mean, it could be used for either uh, uh, the, the LPRs or the or other more general cameras that have a, like in the downtown area, we're still building out some cameras there. How many? Well, that that's a good question. I uh, it depends on the on the pricing and when we, you know, who we buy them from and so forth. We we bring that back to you, and and you vote on the individual contracts. Gotcha. Thank you. Yep. Yes, Ms. Washington. Uh, I had a question about Fund yes. 420. Are those vehicles going to be leased or purchased? Ah, good question. We went down the lease route, uh, yeah, and we went pretty aggressively there about three and a half years ago. Uh, with the knowledge that we have, it seemed like the right thing. And, and in that first year, uh, we all of a sudden we had some key vehicles replaced, and that was great. But. Uh, there's ups and extras in that process, which you may be familiar with, and uh, for we're taking a, br a breather. Uh, at this point, it's almost cheaper to go get a, a, car, a vehicle loan. Uh, we're not, I'm not saying we're doing that. We're not doing that this year. <coughs> but uh, what we were trying to do was was to build up the fund again, and uh, we we accomplished that. 
Now, um, finding, right now, this is a terrible time to buy fleet uh, equipment. And, and uh, prices were high, so you couldn't get fleet. We, we just, uh, in the last couple of weeks, got some vehicles, or we, we know they're coming any day, uh, that were, uh, uh, we thought we would get a year ago. So uh, it, it's a nationwide problem. And, uh, and then there are some uh, manufacturers that just, uh, of course, they're still producing them, but they're, they're not going down that route of, of the, where they're pushing. The, the point of their sales are, are fleets. That's not necessarily what's going on right now. Any other questions, comments? Tom. Okay. Oh, Tom, sorry. Thank you. Uh, just in general, a couple comments overall. Um, the five-year projection, the page four, is extremely helpful. We talked last year about the value of doing five-year projections. That was brought back last year as an uh, improvement to our financial tools. It had been dropped for a while due to circumstances. I'm very happy to see that, and I think uh, the citizens should be happy to see that there's some longer-range planning going on. Um, if you look at the bottom, the summary on page four of what happens to our balances, okay? So taking a look at that, you'll see that on a go-forward basis, 24, 25, 26, and 27, we run a surplus, though declining, um, but still positive. So the questions of a fire station, which is a major commitment, mm -hmm. the amount of staffing that that's required, plus Last year we had quite a discussion about the staffing additions last year, mm -hmm. which were significant, if I remember, 20 or 21 additional heads. And now we're looking at 12, if I'm counting right, 12 increment to that, mm -hmm. nine and three. Yeah. Okay, so the positive thing about my take of that, just from an overall perspective, is that these remain positive with relatively conservative mm -hmm. um, revenue streams. Mm -hmm. The other thing I would say is that a year ago, if you had the same page in front of you a year ago, and you looked at the bottom lines of those five years, um, and some of us made comments about those a year mm -hmm. ago, they were significantly negative in the fourth and fifth year. And we were worried mm -hmm. about federal funds running out. We were worried about the increase in headcount, how sustainable that might be, and so forth. So from a citizen's perspective, uh, I know we're going to fine-tune these, and there may be some yeah. puts yeah. and takes and so forth. Yeah. But just from an overall perspective, um, it seems to be a better position substantially than the conversation we were having a year ago. And thanks for the five-year projection and keeping yeah. it up. And I uh, hope we can yeah. update this in October when we do our summation right. again with um, all the updated uh, data that we get. Thank you for that. Yeah. And, uh, we've. We also look at that. I, I know I, I look very keenly at that, and uh, Susan does too. And, uh, and, and I think, uh, going back to um, Alderman Perkins' comments on the revenue side, uh, there will be some, it will probably be stretched out a little bit more, looking very positive. Uh, what we, yeah, uh, I guess I'll just stop there. So I'm happy, uh, you know. We went over this. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many times we went over this. So I'm trying to get it without, without no cheating. I mean, the numbers. What's the old phrase? Uh, liars. Uh, oh, liar. Figures yeah. don't lie, but uh, liars, liars figure. Yeah, figure. Oh, oh. Uh, so, so you can float. You can float this any way you want. I think we're doing this very conservatively because I'm mm -hmm. I'm concerned that uh, people who will be here uh, when I hit 50. Uh, <laughs> what? I, I have to say I was surprised to remember what happened in 1860. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> well, I was a little, I was a little tyke, and, and uh, yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, we're we're trying to be cautious about this. Thank you for that. Anything else, City Manager? No. Any other final questions or comments? So wonderfully different from 2019, right. when we were at the point 
of digging for quarters in the couch. It was bad. So this is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Any others? Agreed to city manager to commend you and your staff at this point. Um, yes. Um, I just want to add one thing that Absolutely. we've been looking at, just to kind of let you know from a detailed standpoint. For general fund, we have on average 61 uh, accounts that we're looking at, you know, month over month to make sure that we are following the trends and budgeting you know, conservatively, but also accurately. And one other thing that we are doing in the finance department is um, we're looking at what our fund balances are in our accounts at the bank. And we're moving as much money as we can up to Illinois funds on an average of what, 150 to $160,000 a month in interest. That's great. So. You know, we are looking at those on a daily basis and, you know, trying to do everything that we can from a finance standpoint to bring you accurate numbers. Well, I think we have no doubt, looking at last year, I think you said the revenue was 6.7% uh, over budget. And then for city staff to come in 1.3%, <coughs> I think it was, under, uh, you don't hear about government very often that doesn't spend everything that's available to them. I think it just shows that uh, the, DeKalb, uh, the city of DeKalb staff is uh, fiscally responsible, uh, which is great. And I think that's uh, an example we could set for a lot of other community states and including our federal government. So I definitely want to commend you all on whether it's sharpening your pencils, whether it's just doing what you need to do throughout the course of the year. But as Lynn was saying, this is a great spot for us to be in. But it's great that we trust the data that uh, we're being given. We know the due diligence has gone behind that, not just from uh, uh, the people uh, going through the GL accounts and designing the spreadsheets, but to every single staff member in the city of DeKalb. Uh, let's just keep continuing that trend for as long as we can. Thank you. We will. And uh, I think all of you know it. Uh, our department heads uh, will, uh, through the course of a fiscal year, uh, be asked by, by you, by me, can we do this? A little bit, you know, a little bit more in one area, and uh, to a person, they you say, well, let's let's roll up our sleeves, see what we can do, and we move some things around. And my job ultimately is to see that we're staying within uh, the the parameters of what you originally busted. So, uh, I'm, it's been a good team effort, and I'm I'm proud of them and and how we work together. Excellent. Any last comments or questions? Well, hearing none, uh, I guess we would adjourn. And I think the FAC has to adjourn first. Yes. You can just ask for a motion to uh, adjourn. Anybody else? So moved. Oh, so we uh -oh. adjourn. <laughs> we have somebody who has moved and seconded. So, <laughs> so all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. All right. Then from a city council standpoint, I take a motion to adjourn. So, second. Moved by Alderwoman Larson, seconded by Alderwoman Zazada. All in favor say aye. 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 Nay, same sign. All right, we are adjourned. Good, good. Good. Yeah, like if you're saying.